Today we're taking a look at the anime themed third person hack and slash MMORPG Soul Worker. I've considered playing this game for a while now and decided to finally give it a try yesterday. Before we get any further into this impressions and early game review, keep in mind that this is all based off my opinion. Also it's based off the 6 or so hours that I've spent playing the game, so I haven't discovered every single feature and some things that I mentioned could change or might not be accurate because I am playing on the Japanese client. And yes, there is an English patch, and it's pretty damn good. For those interested in playing, please check the description or go to soulworkerhq.com. They have all the questions and answers you're looking for. And also, yes, this game will be coming to the West, and it's being published by Gameforge. We still have no release date, but hopefully we'll see it in 2017. Now let's get to the review. Right away, if you don't like anime or dislike cel shaded graphics, this game is most likely not for you. However, it could make up for what you don't like with its amazing combat, which we'll discuss soon. If you are looking for a game to fill that MMO void, the next big thing that will last you years, in my opinion, this is not it. Not because it's a bad game, because I think this game is amazing, but because it's not your typical open world MMORPG and it doesn't give you character freedom. It's a lot like Hero Wars or Vindictus. It's almost as if those two games had a baby. Now this isn't to say that it can't be the next big game for you, but to me it's more of a pop in pop out kind of game or something to play in between my main MMO. Still though, I can see myself pouring hours into this game. So in Soul Worker you can choose to be one of five characters. There may be more characters in the future or ones you can unlock, but from what I see there is only five. They also give you multiple character slots if you want to try any other characters. There is Haru, the girl with the sword who isn't too hard to master based off the difficulty rating, she was the second class I chose. Erwin the gunner who can go from using pistols to giant rocket launchers, even a sniper rifle, the gunner class lovers will be in love. He also has the same difficulty rating as Haru. Lily the scythe wielding class, a little harder to master than the previous classes, and my first choice, her skill animations and the combat really made me fall in love with this game. Stella uses a guitar that seems to summon dragons or demonic spirits. She is a 5 out of 5 when it comes to difficulty rating, so kudos to anyone who masters her. And then you have Jin, who seems like the martial arts, crush you with my fist kind of guy, and based off difficulty, he is the second hardest class to master out of these 5. The reason I chose Lily was because, yes, a scythe is fucking awesome, but also fist, guns, and a guitar just doesn't appeal to me, and Haru being the first class and low difficulty rating made me feel as if most new players would choose her. Each character has a backstory. Now, Soul Worker is set in a post-apocalyptic world where demons seem to have taken over and destroyed pretty much everything. Each of these characters uses a weapon or weapons that gain power from a soul or their emotions. When choosing a character, you get to learn a bit about them and their backstory when the world went to shit. For Lily, it seems as if she came home to find her family or someone close to her dead, and she picked up the nearest weapon to bash the demon's head in. Then she breaks down, cries on the ground, and soon that crying turns into laughter. Now, I believe she is possessed because throughout playing with her, she switches personalities pretty often. She has a nice side, and then she goes completely psycho. It's pretty cool. With Haro, you have a similar story, finding loved ones dead, breaking down, screeching, except she's not possessed. Now, if you know the backstories of this game and the characters, please feel free to share in the comments. Don't get pissed if I got something wrong. The introduction gets you used to all the controls, making combos with your skills, getting familiar with the game, the usual. I suggest you not skip the intro with your first character because it also has some cool cutscenes. Once you get to the main hub or main town, you get hit with some pretty peaceful music. And yes, this game has a really good soundtrack from the dungeons to the towns. There's also a ton of different red gates in the main town, a lot of NPCs, general merchants, a crafting NPC, bank slash warehouse manager, and a few others to give you quests throughout running these dungeons. The way the game works is that you chill in this main hub, and when going on a mission, you walk to these gates. Each gate takes place in a certain area with multiple missions or episodes as they call it. And each episode looks the same in design, they just have different mob placement. And as I said earlier, this isn't your typical MMORPG, so if you come into it looking for the next big thing, what can you pour hours into? Run trade packs, PvP and fight factions dominate the server, and whatever else, this is not that kind of game. The game early on is also easy to solo, and if playing by yourself, which most of you will do, it feels a bit lonely. It's loads of fun, but eventually you'll feel like, man, 
This would be so much better with friends, and from what I hear it will be extremely hard to progress late game without teammates, so that's a plus. Luckily I asked a bunch of people to join last night while streaming so I can have some friends to play with in the future or tonight. The combat is amazing. You can unlock new skills and place them down in your hotbar, but there are too many skills to fit in your hotbar. So what can you do? Well, you can also combo certain skills, like a dash that can turn into spinning your scythe and knocking enemies back. Using a hotbar skill that has a combo bound to it as well can be used by pressing Z after the skill to follow up with the next skill or two. I changed Z to a different keybind because I don't like the placement of Z on my keyboard or you know having to move my fingers all the way down there. This game can also use a gamepad for those interested. Early on dungeons feel easy. Even as you play for a few hours they still feel easy. The bosses are easy as well. The only thing that was a challenge was how much health the bosses had you know later. Not at the one hour mark of the game but like the six hour mark the boss's health was just huge. Now I'm not saying that this is just an easy game, but early on you'll wonder where the challenge is. And as I said from what I heard, you can't even progress without a party at a certain point, which means it's probably going to get super difficult later on, and I can't wait. Now how about customizing your character? Aside from being able to change the hair, voice, skin tone, name, and outfit of your character, there's the cash shop where you can swipe your credit card, check out the item mall, try on outfits, and really, you can make your character look totally different by just giving them unique accessories, but still the main body and facial details of the character you choose will remain the same. You can also buy costumes and stuff off the marketplace with in-game currency, though it's pretty expensive. As I quested, I unlocked a little backpack bag or fanny pack thing for Lily and was also gifted a free outfit so I guess you can get some free stuff as well. How important is the lore and story of the game? Hmm. From the few cutscenes I've seen through dungeons it seems pretty cool like an action packed anime but nothing really made my character feel important or made me feel like I was making a huge difference in the story. Just slashing my way through hordes of monsters and clearing dungeons. This could be because it's in Japanese and I don't understand anything, or I don't know, maybe the story didn't appeal to me much, but this is just an early game. The introduction to the characters kind of hits you in the feels though. You know. I did feel an impact with that. The controls of the game are awesome, the UI is sexy, especially the top left character and health display you have with the lifeline. I really like that. The game runs really smooth, haven't crashed once, frames seem to stay at a constant 60 or above, and overall the game just felt really smooth. The graphics of course aren't too realistic, but these are my favorite kinds of graphics. Anime themed and cell shaded. Borderlands, Zelda Wind Waker, Gigantic, some of my favorite games that use these kinds of graphics. So let's talk more about the combat. You unlock skills, use them as you normally do in any other MMO, 1 through 6, and you have Q and E for your health and SG, which is like mana. Six key slots is not enough to hold all the skills, so you are forced to build combos, and the combo system is amazing. I use my one hotkey combo to pretty much kill all enemies close to me with three skills that deal massive damage to anybody who's close ranged. My two combo helps me close the gap with enemies further away, and my three combo is for when I have enemies pinned down or a group in front of me. The skills I have locked to my three combo keep my character in place and let me spam left mouse button for more damage. Left click is your basic attack slash combo that builds SG so you can use more of your hotbar skills. If this game becomes more difficult, I can tell that these boss fights are going to get super hard and require a lot of focus because the mechanics are definitely there. As far as gearing goes, you have your weapon, helmet, fist, chest, and boots, with the accessories, earrings, necklace, and two rings. There seems to be an enchanting system, but I haven't made it that far, or if it is available, I haven't messed with it yet. Also there is crafting. You can get blueprints and craft spirits to make better weapons and gear. This might turn to a grind fest end game, but with this type of game, I'm okay with that. There is also a housing system where you can craft furniture and place it wherever in your home. Similar to Revelation where its instants and rooms have ratings. You can look up other rooms and visit their places as well. This game is also very alt friendly and I'll explain why. There is a fatigue system which gives you a certain amount of points daily. Each time you run an episode or dungeon instance, it costs a certain amount of FP. Once this hits zero, I'm sure you can't run any more dungeons for the day. So switching to another character would give you a separate FP bar, allowing you to run more dungeons and level a different character so it's not really bad unless you want to focus on one character. But why focus on one character in a game where your playstyle, skills, story, and looks are set for you from the start? 
If you can play as multiple champions in a MOBA, master more than one, and that's the same way I feel with this. Plus, it's fun to switch up the playstyle and who knows, maybe it'll be good to have different characters for party play late game when bosses become super hard. There are also achievements, a looking for party system, tons of dungeon areas with different episodes and different settings, an AR system which I think allows you to craft characters and bring them along with you. I could be wrong, but the character that I had for me with Lily was pretty crap. Overall, this game was amazing. I love the combat, I love the graphics, and I can't wait to see the late game and take on hard dungeons with friends. It's a very fun game to stream and keep me entertained for several hours while talking to the chat, and for what it is, this game will be great to play when I'm bored or looking for something to take up time until my next big no-life MMORPG. Would I recommend it? Hell yes. Do I recommend you wait until the NA or EU version? If you have patience and you're not really excited about this game, then yes, but if your hype can't take it, then the Japanese version isn't too hard to set up and there is a very helpful English speaking community at soulworkerhq.com. We have no date on when the NA or EU version will be here and since it's being published by Gameforge, who knows what will happen. My only complaint with this game is that it lacks character customization and puts most of it behind a paywall. Though they make it to where you can buy outfits from other players via the marketplace with in-game currency, it just kind of sucks because everyone almost looks the same. The camera is also sometimes a little annoying with all the crazy animations going on and being stuck in a corner. The game also seems to take a while before it gets difficult. I kinda wish it was a bit harder early on, but then again, I could just be super good at this game and, you know, that's why it's so easy. Can't really complain that this game doesn't have open world in faction versus faction because it's not that kind of MMO. That's like comparing a grocery store called Dinner Foods to a grocery store called Breakfast Foods and complaining that Dinner Foods doesn't have breakfast food and you're really pissed about it. What did you expect in a choose your hero with their own backstory kind of game? Okay, maybe that analogy sucked. Let me know what you guys think about Soul Worker. Do you plan on trying it? If I continue to enjoy this game, maybe I'll do a few videos about it on the channel, and if you guys like them, then I might make a guide on how to get set up and play on the Japanese servers. Usually I try not to promote playing foreign games because they are a pain in the ass to set up and might burn you out or ruin your hype for the western version, but I can't really see that happening with a game like this. Let me know what you guys think and I'll catch you in the next one. See you soon, friends.